<laughs> have a late-breaking bulletin. What? Yes, late from the Weather Bureau. Yes, tomorrow is going to be mostly sunny with an 80% chance of Skylab falling on your house. <laughs> I mentioned last night that the odds, and it concerned a lot of people, 154 to 1, that you might be struck by part of the Skylab. Now, that's not very good odds, is it? We were pointing out that that could be two or three people just in this audience alone. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody looking, not me, it won't happen to me. Today is also, as you know, is the first day of summer. It is also the longest day of the year. Now you know how President Carter feels every day. <laughs> Want to see how his mother liked that one? <laughs> well, we, uh... well, you, you know how you know it's summer? Because it's, gasoline is a dollar a gallon, just like they promised. <laughs> yeah. Whoever thought that the two words would strike terror in American hearts would be last car. <laughs> you know, a lot of people canceled vacations this summer because of the gasoline shortage. They were going to go out. I know a fellow out in Encino, in the valley here, who put his kids in the Winnebago and just ran alongside the windows holding up pictures... <laughs> holding up pictures of Grand Canyon. And the kids... It's a sad affair. You know, a few weeks ago, I mentioned last night on the show, they were kidding us back east, Californians, about being gas guzzlers and not being able to manage our gasoline, as you, of course, now know. It's happened in the East Coast, in New York, and in Washington today, D.C., the odd-even system began. Nixon's finally getting his revenge. <laughs> you see, everybody back there depends on license plates, and his administration made most of them. <laughs> June 21st. 21st of June. You know it's summer. I saw a robin today schlepping his worm to the beach. <laughs> was, uh... Do you know Carl Malden switched to a straw hat and a seersucker nose today? <laughs> you see, many guys, most comedians, a lot of them were raised in New York City, the Lower East Side. And in the summer, uh, the way you cooled off New York City, you opened up a fire hydrant. And that's the way you got cool. But see, I come, I was raised in Nebraska, and we didn't have that. On a hot day, what we'd do, we'd just open a valve on a Guernsey. <laughs> well, those of you know what a Guernsey is, I got it made. And Ed, who's kind of from back east, used to go to summer camp in the Poconos. <laughs> that's where he had, he's told me this, and I've never revealed it, but I, I figure, why not now? That's where he had his very first summer romance with an, with an Indian maiden. <laughs> Princess Dying Rabbit. <laughs> it was, uh, it was uh, just a beautiful day today. I took a stroll down Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. Have you been there? That is a ritzy, ritzy street. I saw two Beverly Hills kids. They had a little lemonade stand. Three dollar cover and a five dollar minimum. That's no way to grow up. Well, I mentioned earlier there's some good news and bad news. The bad news is that they say now that Skylab, there's a possibility it may fall on New York City. The good news is it'll be stripped before it hits the ground. <laughs> As you well know, I'm sure by now we have tonight on the show the uh, mother of uh, one of the country's most important and respected and beloved citizens. That's my mom up there in the eighth row. <laughs> no, it's, it's a privilege to have the president's mother, Miss Lillian. Miss Lillian Carter is on the show, and I ask her backstage tonight um, if she's ever bothered about uh, the jokes I occasionally make about her sons. And she said no. She believed that that was the American way. She has no hard feelings. 
And she even agreed to go down tomorrow and see me on my troop transport to Korea. Uh, there was one silly item in the news today. This I don't understand at all, and, and it was on television news. There was a fellow in Japan who invented a square watermelon. Now, it's true. Why, I don't know. I've heard of chicken in a basket, but... Watermelon in a valise? <laughs> well, that's about all I have on that, really. Uh, they cost 20 bucks a piece, though. That seems high, but they also open to a radio. <laughs> okay, I won't keep you any longer. Uh, we have an exciting show on tonight. Later, uh, Lieutenant Governor Mike Kerb will be out here and ask Miss Lillian to adopt him so he can get to Washington without being governor. <laughs> And along with Miss Lillian Carter, we have Burt Reynolds. Oh. And Miss Carol Wayne, who along with the mighty Carson art players, will bring you another tea time movie tonight. My first guest tonight, in addition, of course, to being uh, the mother of the President of the United States, has received uh, numerous awards herself in the recognition of uh, many outstanding years of humanitarian service to others. And uh, it's been quite a while since we've had a, uh, such a picturesque, quotable, and colorful uh, presidential mother who's appeared on the White House scene. And it's a great pleasure and honor to have her here tonight. Would you welcome, please, Miss Lillian Carter. It is such a pleasure to have you here tonight. Yes, and I've been listening to you from the outside, too. Were you, <laughs> were you, were you listening to the... Yes, uh... I heard what you said. Uh-huh. No, it doesn't bother me. In fact, that's the reason I came today, so you cut out Carter jokes for one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know... Well, you don't get to see the show too often, you no. told me, because uh, it's a little bit, little bit late. Yeah, I have to listen to the ball game every night. Yeah. Yeah. So I just... Don't turn it off for you, <laughs> but when it, and if I do get to be the ball game and try to look at you, somebody else is on. Yeah. How been nice. Well. <laughs> I like you. Did you think that the president might be able to get a guest president on Monday nights or something like that? He might. Because he has, it, a, has a tough job. Well, I know he does, but yeah. he overcomes it. Yeah. And you will, too. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, how are the kids? Which kids? <laughs> All of your children. Oh, you prefer. We, we sat together one they... night at, yes. at a very nice dinner. Yes, we did. Uh, with, with the Gregory Pecks. Yeah. And I asked you at that time, you prefer to be called Miss Lillian. That's don't right. You? That's, that's what I prefer to call. I remember that night because right. uh, you came in and sat by me and I asked you how you rated getting over there with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you told me and I said, oh, well, Johnny, I have to tell you, I never did like you. <laughs> and he, you said, by the end of the evening, you're going to find me charming. That's right. Which I did. Don't put it in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's nice. You know, I, that, I was a little nervous because uh, uh -huh. when, when you meet somebody who's a president's mother, you, you want to be on your best behavior. That's right. And there have been times in, in history when I have been out and have not been on my best behavior. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't hear that. No, Okay. <laughs> You are, um, can, I, can I ask you one question? I you want... can ask me anything you want to. Now, there are no, there are no ground right. rules. No ground rules. I say right. what I want to, you say what you want to. When the, um, when the youngsters were little children, mm -hmm. uh, and they would act up, especially, let's say, uh, the president, when he was a little boy, and you had to discipline him, did you ever uh, whip his behind? 
Or any other name. <laughs> <laughs> or any other name. Right. So that's where he got that. Now, yes. you... Now you, you saw that quote in the in in the papers. Yes, I saw it. What was your first reaction when you when you read it? Well, that? I thought that's my Jimmy. <laughs> I was asked her a dozen times since then. I bet you were. Oh, uh, do you think he said it? I said the paper said he said it, so mm. he must have. Yeah. Well, you know the newspapers are not always accurate no, in their not, reporting. They're not always accurate. Are they ever? I wonder sometimes. I wonder too. But, you know, they, they quit saying bad things about you because they're afraid you'll leave. <laughs> really? They won't have anybody to talk about. Uh, you know, I wondered, um, is, it, is it difficult for you when, you when you pick up a newspaper and you read things from columnists or reporters who are unkind? Or the National Enquirer. Yeah, or any of those. Uh, or something like that who say unkind things uh, about the president? Um, or have you learned that I've political learned life is such an arena that that will happen? I've learned not to worry about polls. I've learned not to worry about anything. You know, NBC's polls aren't doing so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Well, you'll go up. You'll go up, and yeah. so will we. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Certainly. I promise this. I came about Mayor Bradley. This, that's a different part of California, but you know where Los Angeles is, don't you? Certainly. He invited me out to this Mendora, the 30th anniversary of this beautiful, beautiful place to have the uh, uh, citizens, senior citizens. Right. I was there all day yesterday, and I promised to everyone on that I would mention it on television because they're having a special party to watch me tonight. Are they really? And can I tell them what a good time I had? I had a good time. Oh, well, they want you to not touch me. You know, it's tough to, to think of questions to ask you. You probably yeah. have not been asked. Uh, and the mm -hmm. most obvious one is, what do you miss most? Uh, I, I would imagine that having a son who's president of the United States, you miss the... Uh, the getting together as often as you used to? Uh, yeah. your, your, the privacy, of course, uh, is not what it used I to be. I miss the privacy. Yeah. I had to move out in the country to get privacy because I have a big dog and I couldn't even turn him out of the house without a tourist stealing his dog collar or his flea collar. As a souvenir. That's right, as a souvenir. And uh, I moved out in the country to a little house I have out there. Come to see me. I would like to do that. I'd like to have you, you and your wife. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, I'd have Maybe. to bring the wife because, you know, in show I business, know, if you're out with a single woman, there's a lot of time. There'll be a lot of time. <laughs> that paper that you mentioned would be added again. Yeah. You, you, like to, you like to cook. What would, you, what would be a typical... I spent a lot of time in the South during the service. I was stationed in Mississippi for a while. Mm, were you? Yes, I sure I was. I like Mississippi. Yeah. I've been over there three times in the last four months. Is that right? They asked me to come. Yeah. Everybody invites me. I don't cost anything. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> you appear for free, yeah. huh? <laughs> so I love Mississippi. You know, they gave the last three votes and got Jimmy in when I you remember. thought he wasn't going to win. Ah. When I thought he won. Did you know, did you have an intuition? And they say women have better intuition than men do. Uh, when all the polls, you know, showed that it probably wouldn't happen. And mm. it was the political... Uh, a coup of the entire decade or century. Oh, it's the greatest miracle that ever happened. Yeah. Did you have an, uh, an instinct that, by golly, it's, it's, it's going to happen? Yeah. I, but every once in a while, he'd kind of go off his old road, like Playboy and all things like that. Right. And I would get uneasy for a few hours, and I'd say, well, honey, they'd rather have him like that than have him so pious. Right. He's a man. Absolutely. Do you find when you're in so public now that you have to be more careful in what you say, knowing that every time you open your mouth, somebody's going to print it. Yeah, I Or you'd like to I, say something sometimes and really I find that I should do that. But still, I don't know when anything comes to my mind, I say it. I'll tell you a good joke when you get off. <laughs> okay. You know what worries me more about uh, California than anything? I'm a Dodger fan. Yes. And the plane rushed 
to get Pierre in time for me to see the game not for last. And, oh, boy, was I disappointed. I know. Are has... you a Dodger fan? Yes, and it hasn't. Things have been a little tough. It's been tough. Do you think you could get uh, the president to declare federal aid to the team? I'm going to see. It's a disaster I'm area. Huh? We have to interrupt to do this commercial, but we're going to come right back, and we've got a lot of things to talk about. So stay with us. Thank you, Tom. I heard Miss Lillian just asked it if that was really iced tea he was drinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's no fun at all, is it? You, uh, you occasionally, uh... Take a little nip. <laughs> Good for the blood, isn't it? Ask that. Did you know I was going to ask that? I knew you would, because oh. everybody does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Dick. Diff- Fine, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, you want to talk about that at all? Yeah. Since somebody fine. brought that up. Uh, sure. It's, it's well known. It's well known. It's, Billy's it's my well favorite known. child. Did you know that? Billy's doing fine. He went out yeah. to Cal- came to California on his own, and he. He came back and not even smoking cigarettes. That's what I heard. They, they, he's doing fine. There's a lot of people. I, I always like to talk about it because so many people have been interested in him and he did drink a little too much and he's just like a different one. He's lost a lot of weight. But he chews tobacco now. <laughs> but it's not the kind that dribbles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that dribbly kind is murder. I think he swallows it. <laughs> Look, it takes, uh, you know, when you're in the public eye, mm-hmm. it takes a certain amount of personal courage to go out. And, uh, it was and courage. Senator Talmadge has done it, and several other people, yeah. and Mrs. Ford, when she had her problem, talked about it, because it's a problem a lot of people have, mm-hmm. and it's certainly nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. You know, I think it's wonderful of him to go, and he went mm-hmm. of his own accord. And I really appreciate people asking me about him, because we're so proud of him. Good for you. So when you said you took a little little nip... Well, you know, that's late in the afternoon. I tell you, the other day when I left Atlanta... Can I talk? Sure. You talk so much. You can say anything. That's right. (laughs) And Jimmy just like this. Did you ever say that to your son, the president, now when he's talking? Say, Jimmy, you talk too much. I said, shut up. You do, huh? (laughs) The other day when we left Atlanta, you know, the difference in time confuses me. Right. And uh, I never take my nip until just before I have supper. We call it supper at my house. We did in the Midwest also. Well, of course, supper. and that's what it really is. That's right. And I take, I take that little bourbon every uh, evening just before supper. A couple of fingers? Uh... Yeah, well, uh, no, I won't know. I don't know. Just mm, a little bit. Sure. And uh, we got on the plane, and it was 5 o'clock plane's time, and it was about 2 California time. And I made the big mistake of putting my, my watch back to California time. And here, the minute we left, here she's serving cocktails. And I said... With alcohol? Yeah. I said, I can't take a drink until 5 or 6 o'clock. You know what I did? I set my watch back. <laughs> my children are listening to me. Yeah. That's nice. Ed has a watch that's on every time zone in the world. It? <laughs> if it's uh, 5 o'clock in Zanzibar, he has a drink. It makes no difference. I always ask when I'm on a plane... Uh, going different places for Jimmy and especially on these Air Force Twos that I have been on once or twice. And they start, they, some people on that plane drink all day. I don't do it. Right. I said, not till six o'clock. And every once in a while, and finally I said, when it's six o'clock planes time, I'll have a drink. You want to stay on planes time? I have to stay on time. planes time, yeah. yeah. Do you occasionally have a, a smoke? Oh, yeah, I smoke when I want to. If I get nervous, I smoke five or six at one time, then I don't smoke another one maybe for two months. (laughs) Pretty nervous. How do you do that? I wish I could do that. I can do it. I I don't know. I have a lot of willpower. In other words, if you get nervous, you you can have a few and then just... Uh, Yeah, but now today I've smoked one. Yeah. I had to borrow that one. (laughs) (laughs) I love these people. I love these people who say, I quit and bum yours. And then borrow one all the time. What, how do you handle it when you're out and people come to you and ask you, if, or maybe they do this, uh, to intercede or to oh, suggest boy. to the president uh, some, some special interest or something? Does uh, that happen often? All the time. Now, how do you diplomatically handle that? I told them that? when they hand me an envelope, I said, it's against the rules. 
I, I can't accept an envelope or a package for Jimmy. I'm sorry. Right. But every day I get 15 or 20 letters, and in that there's one addressed to the President of the United States, and I just, without a, and I put a White House and let them do what they want to with it. Right. But when they asked me to intercede, I said, no. I have direct contact with Jimmy any time I want to, but we talk about personal things, like what did you have for dinner last night, or where are you going today? Right. Oh, what did he Jimmy. have for dinner last night? Uh, collards. Collards? Yeah. I'm sure he did. Cause I, I learned, I learned to eat those in the South. They're wonderful. I don't know what he had for dinner last night, but he, he does love them. And he had to teach the cooks in the White House what to cook, how to cook grits and everything. Grits. Mm -hmm. Now, grits, I'll be honest with you. Uh, when I first went, I grew up in Nebraska. And when I first went to Mississippi, and I remember going through, with, was it in the naval training? Yeah. And for breakfast, all of a sudden I saw this... Grits? Mound of, uh... Gee, they're good. I finally learned to like them. Well, you have to put a little butter on yeah. them and a little salt. Yeah. But, uh, that is a secret weapon, the grits. <laughs> I mean, and you get it no matter where you go in the South. You can go in for gas at a gas station. <laughs> and they'll, they'll give you a side order of grits. <laughs> In your pocket, you know, buy a suit, and there's a pocket full of grits, but it's... But they're delicious with, with bacon, a country ham, and red-eye gravy. Now, oh, that's now you're good talking. grits, yeah. yeah. I've, uh, I've been like Ed. I've been trying to lose a little weight, and every time I lose five pounds, I go on one of these trips, and I have to eat. Yeah. And getting it back is tough, isn't it? Yes. It's not the easiest thing on earth. When you go to the White House, do you like to stay at the White House? No, I don't. Really? Why? I, well, I didn't mind when Jim and Rosen left home. I missed Amy. Amy, I kept right. up for two years. And when I go to the White House, both of them are so busy. And it's just another museum to me. And I go and visit all my friends at the State Department. You know, and they're all, they're all I'm from Georgia, you've heard. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> and I, I visit them. And we eat and we go out together. And yeah. then when I go back, I see Jimmy and Rose in about ten minutes. I get a little risque sometimes, but it's just for fun. <laughs> Everybody has to get a little risque once in a while, don't you think? Have you ever made a speech to a crowd when nobody smiled? <laughs> Many I times, did. right here. <laughs> Many times. I've learned the remedy for that. Oh, what do you do? Look out. Just say something a little risque and everybody's ears pick up. Isn't that funny? They don't expect to hear it. No, they don't. But they've got to where they expect it from me. <laughs> Somebody no. told me, I think it was uh, when I... Things I read about, I think it was in '49. You and uh, and the late Mr. Carter built what you described then as a dream, as a house, dream house in, in Plains, Georgia. Now, in 1949, that's 30 years ago. What would a dream house be to me? Yeah, I know a right. room with two baths. A Is that house right? with two baths. We had four children and one bath, and we were always late in getting off of the bus. Everybody was trying to get in the bathroom at one time. Of course, we had an outdoor. Uh, Outhouse. Yeah, privy. Yeah, privy is what they call them. <laughs> and it, uh, it was quite uh, excellent. It was better than most people because it was kind of a two-story thing. More than one could go at it at the time. So, <laughs> I, I, I Have a that. microwave oven in there? <laughs> Very much. Well, Sears and Roebuck catalog. Sears and Roebuck catalog. Well, no, I'm... that's when Jimmy was small. We didn't have electricity at first. Right. And uh, as soon as we got electricity, we got a bathroom, and that was the greatest innovation. Just think about not having to go out in that cold weather. But what I thought more than anything, I only had one child at home, is to have a bathroom for everyone. It makes a difference, doesn't it? Oh, it does, really. I can still remember uh, when my parents uh, went from... Uh, where you had to stoke the furnace, a coal furnace, yeah. to, to oil. Yeah. And that was like, a, you know, stepping ahead a decade or something. Yeah. But I kind of mm. missed that. I remember going down in the morning and having to bank the fire to keep yeah, it going yeah. during the night. And you yeah. think you lose with all the technology? You think you lose sometimes the, the personal relations and the, and the quieter think. days? Or do you think this is a, a good time like to live? I like these days. I tell you, don't tell me to go back to the old times. Yeah, you hear people being yeah. nostalgic yeah. all the time. Just stay where you are. You don't know what it was to go out and get wood and draw water in the well and things like that. I know all about that. In fact, if you weren't born poor now, you're just nothing. Yeah. If, if you're born rich, people don't mean, no, pay any attention to you. Yeah. A little adversity in your life is good you for some people. You have to have it, especially if you write a book. Yeah. <laughs> 
Are you going to? Are you writing a? No, I've never written anything. My daughter wrote one, and and it, I wrote a lot of some India. And she when you were in the Peace Corps, there, and put them in a book. Right. But you I must have had many, many offers from publishers asking you to write a book. Oh yeah. Why? I you... don't have time. Really? Are they keeping well, you very yes, busy? I stay very busy. Well, I know you're out here for this uh, special thing in, yes, in Los Angeles. Yes, I'm right. It has to do with senior citizens. Yeah. Why do you think it is in this country that that we don't... And a lot of people don't even like the term senior citizen. They just say elderly or whatever. I don't like to be called senior citizen. Yeah, it sounds like a euphemism for yeah, somebody who yeah. is elderly or old. They try it? to get me a senior citizen. Get a new word for it. No. The elderly. There's nothing yeah, wrong with well, growing old. And if we're all lucky, we're all going to grow old. Well, I'm never growing old. I'm just 80. And oh, I'm you're not old. Never. No, you're you not. You know, when I was 79, I felt a lot older. I thought 79 sounds ancient. And when I got 80, I took on new life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really want to thank you for coming tonight. Well, I love it's it. It's just been a... Great pleasure. Oh, you I've are. had the best time. I didn't know you were so nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to read all those newspapers again. Uh, you should know not to read those things in fact. Keep around. Thank Will you? you so much. And how do I get off this place? I'm going to go with you. Thank you, Miss Lily. Miss <laughs> Lily, come There are votes there. Oh, oh yes. Oh, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> she, says, she says what's on her mind. She's Some fun lady. to talk with. We will be right back. We have, um, what do we have? Bert Mike? Reynolds, if oh. you consider him anything. <laughs> and uh, first, before that, we're going to do a Mighty Carson Art Player. Yes, we're going to try that one more time. One more time. We'll be right back. Tommy, it's time once again. All right. Tommy, let's come in and get into the office. We'll never hold back on that. It is time for a visit once again with one of the mainstays of daytime television, the late afternoon movie host who brings you old pictures and sells anything and everything in sight. Welcome, please, that exciting guy, your host for today's Tea Time movie, your friend and his lovable, Art Fern. <laughs> Feature film freaks, Art Fern here with today's feature film find. Edward G. Robinson, Leo G. Carroll, E. G. Marshall, C. Aubrey Smith, E. G. Gordon, Liddy, and El Bombo, the super pigeon, and Ma and Paul Kettle go to Plato's retreat. But first, friends, <laughs> are you in a dead-end job? Is the highlight of your day watching the bubble go up on the water cooler? Are you tired of sharing desk space next to a man who's had gas for 20 years? <laughs> To relieve boredom, do you find yourself straddling the photocopy machine and Xeroxing your stretch marks? <laughs> Listen to me, friends, and maybe it's time you changed jobs and got into the exciting and rewarding field of veterinary medicine. Learn how to become a veterinarian. Enroll now in the school for veterinarians, Spay Tech. <laughs> That's right, friends. Spay Tech. Our motto is Mongo Tingo Durante, which means once you get your hands on an animal, you'll never let go. <laughs> and speaking of animals, friends. Yes, it's our matinee lady. I've met a lot of vets. I've heard of your charitable work among the veterans groups. <laughs> friends, at Spay Tech, you'll learn everything there is to know about caring for animals. How to tell if a dog is really dead or faking it. He's really dead. If in order to wag his tail, you have to start it. <laughs> we'll teach you how to amaze your friends at dinner by taking out your dog's tonsils with a fondue fork. <laughs> Enroll at Spay Tech and you'll receive this free sign to help to get people to bring your pets to you. <laughs> all the alterations are done right on the premises. That's not all we do on the premises. <laughs> we take you on field trips where you can practice on animals in the woods. You'll visit zoos, reach into a cage, check a hyena for a hernia. You'll train seeing-eye horses for blind jockeys. You'll learn electrolysis and how to remove excess body hair from a beaver. 
You'll teach pets how to do tricks. How do they learn how to do tricks? I'll teach you how to do tricks later. <laughs> Friends, we have a bilingual parrot school so your parrot can curse your garbage man out in Spanish. Maybe you wish to be a specialist. We'll show you what you need to become a pet optometrist. Here's the eye chart we use when examining a cat for glasses. <laughs> We show you the latest in pet surgery techniques like cosmetic surgery. We teach you how to turn your bulldog's face into a German Shepherd's. We can take... We can take this dog here and enlarge her bus line. Wow! I love that. Can I have that done? Beg your pardon? I love that. Can I have that done? If you wish to never stand erect again, you can have that done. <laughs> yes, friends, we also teach you how to mate your cow with a bull. Here's what you do. Put your cow in a field with the bull. Put a red blanket over the backside of the cow. Play a record of Fly Me to the Moon and stand back. <laughs> You'll see your cow jump over the moon. Friends, we have... For the dog who likes his privacy, a pay fire hydrant. <laughs> That's not all, friends. We'll teach you how to become a fish doctor. For example, here is the glove you'll use to check out a sperm whale. <laughs> you'll ask a female octopus to climb into the stirrups. <laughs> we also have a pet service. If you go away on vacation, leave your pets with us. We'll board your beagle, feed your fox terrier, and protect your parakeet. Will you watch my pussy cat? <laughs> At Spaytech, friends, you'll find us. You'll find us in the yellow pages. We used to be in the white pages, but one of our patients had an accident. Or you can actually come to our school in person. How do you get there, you ask? How do we get there? Yes, you take the San Diego Freeway to the Ventura Freeway to the Slauson Cutoff. Get out of the car. Cut off your Slauson. Get back in the car and drive six miles till you see a pack of wild dogs sniffing Doris Day. Now, friends, <laughs> back to our movie. Edmund O'Brien, Hugh O'Brien, Margaret O'Brien, Brian Keith, and Macho, the giant oyster, and Andy Hardy goes to a gay roller disco. Hmm. Oh, we're back already. <laughs> we'll be right back to our feature. Errol Flynn, Leon Arrow, Leon Spinks, our own Schwarzenegger, and Hung, the super ape. <laughs> In Tarzan checks a pygmy woman for lumps. But first, friends, <laughs> let me ask you this. How's your backyard? Is your backyard a mess? Is it filled with nothing but crabgrass? Is it filled with nothing but crabs? <laughs> Is there so much junk in your yard that buzzards have to take a number before there's room to land? <laughs> Is the prettiest thing lying on your lawn a dead gypsy? <laughs> then maybe it's time you called in the landscape experts who will spruce up your yard. Get it back in shape for those lazy, hazy, crazy days of outdoor summer living. The professionals in garden improvement management will turn that barren rock pile into a manicured paradise. Yes, friends, I'm talking about a company called Up Your Grass. Now, friends... <laughs> That's fine. At Up Your Grass, we know a lot about gardening. One of our workers is a personal friend of an actual Japanese person. You want an herb garden? We'll send over a man named Herb to squat on your bush. Look at some of the plants. Let me show you some of the plants you'll grow in your garden. Here's the wonderful... Venus flytrap. A pant plant. That is a Venus flytrap, friends. A pant plant. I'd like to pant my plants in your gazebo. Now, friends, with those warm days coming up, what could be more refreshing than a dip in your own private swimming pool? Most pools, most pools. Most pools are kidney shaped, but we'll build you a pool shaped in the organ of your choice. Here's a model of a pool that we built for Dolly Parton, right here. There you are, friends. Take a dip in there. Maybe you wish to install the latest thing to come along in outdoor recreation, the hot tub. You can really get hot in a hot tub. We sat in one last night. It was so much fun with all those bubbles. <laughs> and we're going to try it again tonight, and this time, add water. <laughs> Friends, if you don't have room for a hot tub, we'll give you this portable hot tub, which you can strap to whatever portion of your body you wish to get hot. One suggestion, don't wear this if you're dating a woodpecker. If you wish to go skinny dipping, friends, if you wish to go skinny dipping but you don't want to build a fence, we send over this man who shields you, who shields you, friends, with this coat. 
I beg your pardon? I know Never him. mind, get him out of here. So, friends... So, friends, set up your grass. Don't worry about credit. Got no job? We don't care. Got a bad credit rating? We don't care. Got no money? We don't care. Say so you're not going to pay us? That's when we care. And after we finish fixing up your property, you'll be the talk of the neighborhood. They'll say, let's a victim. To get to up your grass backyard center, take the San Diego Freeway, to the Garden Grove Freeway, to the Long Beach Freeway. Use the Queen Mary facilities. Get back in your car and drive six miles until you get to... The fork. The fork in the road. That's right. Keep moving, fellows. Then go eight more miles till you see the giant neon illegal alien watering the peat moss. That's us. Now back to our flick. Lee Jacob, Lee Majors, Lee Marvin, Bruce Lee, and Inserto, the giant eel. In tugboat, Annie gets her barnacle scrape. So long for now. That's it, man. My next guest, you all know. Thank you. <laughs> Bird's going to be starring in a new film called Starting Over, which is going to be releasing this fall. And this summer, there's going to be a major re-release of Hooper. It was a good, good, good picture in which he portrays the greatest stuntman alive. What can I say? Bert Reynolds. I could have got that if I'd worn my black suit. <laughs> you know, the first thing that the president's mother said to me after being getting all the little social amenities out of the way, I walked in the room and said, Mr. Lillian, it's a pleasure to have you here. She said, where's Bert Reynolds? <laughs> first thing she said, she said she, she said, wanted to meet you. right, lady. She really... <laughs> Wonderful lady. I, I was watching her on the monitor back there, and uh, she said some brilliant things. The part about me, I thought, was you expressing. You did get a chance to go in and I, meet her, did yes, you? Yes, she's wonderful. She's really wonderful. Yeah, she says what's on her mind. and uh... sure does. It's, uh, she has a great sense of humor. Yes, she does. Uh, I think she says a few little things just to, to, to shock people sometimes. Yeah. Like when she says, we're going to have a little bourbon tonight. She leaned over and says, you know, I just said that. <laughs> she's not going to have a little bourbon. No, I think she's going to have a little belt. Yeah. yeah. How you been? I haven't seen you for a long time. Good. I got my uh, grown-up grown clothes on. I was going to say, this is, uh... This is, this is, uh... Thank you. Thank you. Be in the parking lot later, and we'll... This is, uh... This is for you. I mean... No, this is, uh... I did this for the first mother. I, uh, you know, I wore them for her. And she... I didn't realize she was going to leave, and I had to... Going to do another gig somewhere or something. But, uh, thought I was going to get a chance to talk to her. Probably in a gas line somewhere. Or something. <laughs> Well, this is very nice, really, because... Thank you. Uh, normally, you come on, you look like a, a Mexican road agent. Yeah. <laughs> like you're holding up the stage from Barstow or something, but yeah. this uh, yeah. is nice. Well, I like to, uh, to change now and then. You know, I think the leather look is, is going out. You know, it's nice to have a nice, you know, yeah. adult look. Yeah. Is the leather out on its way out? Well, uh, it's I not I never a... got into leather. I mean, I know... Well, that's not what I heard. <laughs> we all have our little... Uh... You have a little... You know, you have your leather night, but it's after you leave here. <laughs> I remember. You remember that night? Yes, I do. Now, David Steinberg was here a couple of weeks ago. Remember that night? And he was talking about uh, being at your house along with yeah, Ed McMahon yeah. for a big party. Yeah, and we, I had said a nice, it, we had a really good party. And I said at that time my invitation was probably lost in the mail. I, uh, no. No. See, I've been waiting for you to ask me to be in the uh, the mighty Carson R. Players sketch. You've never asked me. Oh. So, uh, you've had other actors. You've had you've had some. You yes, know, that's true. George C. Scott. You had uh, George Maureen Stapleton. Maureen Stapleton. E.G. Marshall. E.G. Marshall. Beverly Sills. Beverly Sills. Never asked me. I'm number one this year. Number one. You know, this man has received. Now this year, I saw the People's Choice, and you were voted. 
the most popular actor and the most popular entertainer of the year. First time anybody has won that at uh, uh, the same time. And you're also voted... I'm not even going to work next year. I'm just going to be put out the stud. Are you going <laughs> to... And the number one, by the national figures, number one is the number one box office star in the world. Now, that doesn't leave much for the rest of us to grub around for. Yeah. We get well, things it's... like the nicest haircut or clean yeah. fingernails or something, but you, yeah. you've taken yeah, everything out. I noticed that. Uh, What'd you do? I, I was just kind of puttering around the house, as they say, you know, and uh, closed the window on it. <laughs> Did you do one of those dumb things? I looked at the window and said, I'm number one here. <laughs> and the window didn't, didn't care. It was right down. <laughs> that doesn't help, does it? doesn't help, uh, No. Oh, what do you got to look forward to now? I just... Uh, tank of gas? <laughs> uh, I'll be honest. The please. Oscar? The Oscar would be good. Wouldn't that be nice? But I don't think I'll ever win an Oscar. Why not? Well, I, it's, it's very seldom that, uh, that the industry uh, likes uh, what the people like. You see? You mean if you did uh, Hamlet or... Uh, so, deep, deep... Well, I'd like to do something really, you know, really historic, like Smokey Meets Hamlet. Smokey Meets Hamlet. Double nickels him to death. Yeah, yeah. Smokey meets Hamlet. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they. I don't think the people go for it. Does that? Well, no, come on, up, Bert. Inside, does it bother you? I mean, was that? Is that would be the? Uh, it's a thing festering sore. But uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of people in Hollywood who've never won an Oscar. It's true. Yeah. You know, good actors. You have actors to get very are. ill or very old. Or be very good and live in an attic in New York. You think that's, that's yeah. the trick? Yeah. I think that's a prerequisite. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. I, I think maybe I'm doing some, some good pictures now with some important directors who uh, the industry likes, and maybe that'll help. Yeah. And you'll you still, get a lot of credit. And you still like to direct? I want to direct more than anything else. That's really what I want. Better to than acting? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I love uh, well, it's, it's, it's the difference between being a chess player and a chess pawn, you know. And, it's, uh, and besides that, you don't have to hold your stomach in. You know? <laughs> you just let everything go. Huh? Yeah. I have to do a commercial here. Sure, I understand. I know, of course. Yeah. Well, we have to pay you, you know. We have to do this to get all these big funds that we give you. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> we'll be right back after this. <laughs> I've <laughs> uh, mentioned when Miss Lillian was there. Have you ever met the president? Or uh... yes, I did. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was so nice to me. I. I was. How nice? <laughs> uh, I got nothing for that. Uh, I, I'll tell you how nice. I was doing a picture called The Longest Yard, and uh, I, we needed a prison, and so uh, they had one in Georgia. Uh, boy, they got one in Georgia. And uh, That's we went, film down we went there to find out uh, if we could use the state prison. And uh, while I was talking to him, he was very gracious. And I said, uh, what happens if somebody grabs me? You know, not because they like me, but I mean, because <laughs> they want to hold me for a while, you know. And, uh, it's a possibility. It's a possibility, you know. Sure. And uh, he said, I'll come and, um, and take your place. And I, and I thought right then, at that very moment, I said... This guy is either really nice and not too bright, <laughs> or he's lying, you know? <laughs> either way, he's got a great chance to be president. <laughs> That's a swift move. Uh, no, he was absolutely charming, and, uh, and they were terrific to us down there. Yeah. Georgia is, uh, is the best state I've ever shot a picture in, in terms of... Uh, <laughs> But we're going to do, uh, we are going to do, Smokey has a child, or whatever it's going to be called. You're doing a sequel, aren't you? Yeah, we're doing a sequel. Well, what is the sequel called? Uh, well, right now it's called uh, Smokey and the Bandit 2, which I think it took a lot of thinking to come up with that. <laughs> but, uh... Now, you were talking a moment ago, but that I have never invited you to, to be on the Mighty Car Star Players. Yes. Then again, you have uh, never said, hey, uh, Johnny, I'm making a motion picture. Right. Uh, would you care to be... In this venture. <laughs> no. I had, uh, see, who did I have? I had, uh, Mike, Mike Douglas did a part in a picture with me. <laughs> he was terrific. <laughs> but uh, he doesn't wear any checks. You know what I mean? 
and the, and the checks just bounce off the screen. You find yourself looking at the checks all the time. You don't look at the face, you know? And, um... Don't you think I could uh, handle a role in one of your pictures? There's no question you could handle a role. <laughs> I'm not asking for a commitment on the air. No, I think you should be, uh... I think you should be seriously considered for, uh, a part. Now, we have a part, uh, in the Smokey 2. Uh-huh. We're taking a pregnant elephant from, uh, from the Key West to the Cotton Bowl before mm -hmm. it gives birth. And locked in with the pregnant elephant, we kidnap a gynecologist <laughs> just to look after the elephant. Mm -hmm. check, check it out, you know? And I think it'd be this a sensational... This is what you have in mind for me. Well, it'd be a great part for you because you, we could shoot it all right in one little room. You know, with the pregnant with the elephant. elephant. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, you know, you, you could use that glove you had. <laughs> Let me get something else. Would you, uh... you want something a little more romantic? Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not for me. If you had your choice of any woman in the world, who would you like to work with? As an actress? Yeah. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't exactly know. Excuse me, I'm. Yeah. Uh... As an actress, of course. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of, of fine actresses. I think Jane Fonda is an excellent. I think Sally Fields yeah. is one hell of an actress. Shirley MacLaine is a good actress in certain things. Yeah. Uh, I can get you one of those. Glenda Jackson is a, is a good actress. Glenda Jackson is a great actress. Yeah, they're, all, they're all people terrific like, people actresses. Like I like all those. Well, did you have something in mind? Uh, yeah, well, I was thinking, uh, somebody asked me that the other day. Uh, Sophia Loren has always been kind of a fantasy of mine. You never met her? I, I, I met her. But yeah, I, we had her on the show, I, and I she's did. charming, girl. She's, she's charming. charming. Yeah. I'm going to do a play with uh, uh, Carol Burnett. At my theater. That's right. You have the dinner theater in yeah. your hometown. Yeah. Uh, not actually your hometown. It is my hometown. It is your hometown. As I said, it's your yeah. hometown. Yeah. <laughs> in Florida. Yeah. Jupiter. And it's simply called it's the Burt Jupiter. Reynolds, the Burt Reynolds uh, Dinner Theater. Right? Yes. Yes. What are you going to do? Same time next year? Uh, yeah. No, I'm not going. No, I'm not going to do that. That's what she did here. Oh, that's with, right. with, I'm going to do a Plaza Suite with her. Oh, that's. that's I've always wanted to do something with Carol. That's my husband didn't want me to, but I always. <laughs> And that's and Joe's, so loser. Joe's silly about the Plaza Suite. Are great. That's that trilogy of three different. Uh, yeah. Things. Be good. Be fun. And uh, and uh, it's at the Burt Reynolds Theater. We're going to call it the Broadway Crawford Theater, but that's silly. <laughs> that's right. People will get lost. And uh, why not put your name on it? Is it doing well? It's it's sold out for for a year. Well, that's insane. Yeah, but you can get tickets if you you know you know if you butter people. <laughs> Hot tickets. Yeah. Never been offered a role in your theater, either. <laughs> you didn't even invite me to your party. I'd like you to come down. I'd like you to do a picture with me. I'd like you to do a, you know... Come I hate to put you play. on the spot like this, but... Uh... All those things I'd like you to do. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's not the cards. It's not the cards. You're hot. You know what I mean? I'm number one. That's right. That's right. I, I saw that. It was so silly. The other night, I was driving around. I was trying to get some gas. And uh, I pulled into a, a station, and um, it, well, it's not a flashy car, you know what I mean? It does say number one on the license plate, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's not a flashy car. It's silver. Yeah. It's not, that's not. And flashy. the neon bumpers, of course. So. Neon bumpers, and the photograph on the right. On the right. <laughs> and I was parked there. This is absolutely the truth. I was parked there, and, and it was late at night, and it was a lot of people. And I thought, you know, uh, I hope this doesn't get out of hand, you know. And, uh, uh, but I'm, I like people, so it's not going to be a problem, you know what I mean? So, uh, sure enough, uh, somebody came over and said, hi, how you doing? I said, uh, getting gas, you know, waiting in line. And, uh, it was one of those do-it-yourself jobs, you know? So, I used to do that. I used to pump gas, uh, when I was, uh, in Florida, but at a place called Billups, and they used to give plates to people that, that got, you know, so many... I'd give a plate to them if they right. filled up. Uh, this wasn't like that. And, I, and I, got the, uh, I got the thing, and I went over, and I stuck it in the back of the, uh, the car. And then I couldn't find the, the little thing, you know, that you used to turn when I was a kid. It starts again. Yeah, and everybody was staring at me, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I really looked silly, and uh, I had the gas pump, and people were just kind of staring at me. So I... I went over and then I finally found a thing and flipped it down and the gas went in and, and I stood there for a long time and, 
And then it kind of filled up, and I went back. And then I walked up to a window, and everybody followed me. <laughs> up to the window. There was a lot of people around. I was, how you doing? Nice to see you. And signing things. I said to the guy I got uh, $10 with, he said, you're only allowed five. <laughs> I said, but I got, I got 10. He said, you're only allowed five. I said, what, do you want me to suck it out of there? <laughs> and uh, so I, I paid the guy five. You're not one of the No. That's funny. It is, it is hard. Do you do that? Do you, do you go in those places? Sure. Or? Yeah. I've done that, but the, 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 now they have a little chrome thing on the side that turns it. It's not a hand. Yeah, that's right. a little valve. You turn Frame it, it that starts the whole business. Yeah. This is something new. I've not seen this middle button open the vest. It's kind of yeah, a touch. Yeah, it's, it's a touch I do myself. I thought it was just a... I do that because... You uh, see, you can set styles like that. Most of us yeah. need a button. Yeah, just, just yeah. Like this. It's kind of cute. Yeah, you like it? Watch every guy in the country tomorrow will have that middle button yeah. open on the vest. It's kind of a nice, nice touch. Yeah. We'll be, uh, be right back after this. <laughs> okay. okay, a lot of fun here. Yes. Uh, I just, uh, I buttoned that back up because no, that was, that was silly to have. Could have been a style set. <laughs> See, I had this on. What? I thought that was... I this. have to be, somebody dresses me when I dress like this. I can't, I, can't, I don't know how to dress like this. So, so I have... Uh, you need a keychain, huh? I have another person come over. Jack Lord comes over. <laughs> and, uh, and I had this, uh... Hanging and it was and, it, and I felt you know silly with this. Well, looks so right. I took this off and I left this unbuttoned, and of course you had to make uh, a I remark. I just thought it. I, mean, uh, I just thought it was something new that yeah, you were. Could uh, be, uh, you know, it could be that I'm very well built and I'm going to the job. <laughs> okay, moving along. My next guest you saw earlier. She's our very own matinee lady, and she's in a movie called Scavenger Hunt, which is now filming. Not right this moment, because she's here. And you, well, obviously, she, you know. Right. Well, I mean, currently, it is in production, as they say. All those movie terms I'm, I'm not hmm. familiar with. And she's, gonna, she's doing a lot, a lot of new commercials and stuff, and uh, we're going to ask her to come out here. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Carol Wayne. <laughs> How are you, dear? Nice. I'm very nice. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Did you meet Mrs. Uh, Carter? Yes, backstage? the first mother, of course. Yeah. What'd you say to her? Did you get nervous when you meet somebody like that? No, I adored her. I think she's really on the ball, you know? I think yeah. she's a real cutie pie. Yeah. Well, sometimes people, you know, get a little tongue-tied and don't exactly know what to, know what to say. Oh, I'm not that way. No. Okay. Have you, have you met before? Carol and I? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. Do I know you? It was a weekend in Pasadena. I, well, I can't imagine you two having met. No, not I, we haven't met. Actually. No, we haven't met. No, but I, I haven't remember. met. <laughs> I would remember. Haven't? We haven't. No. no. I mentioned you were. Go ahead, Bert. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, it's your show. <laughs> I um, I mentioned you were busy doing some uh, some commercials. Yes. I've been very busy. Have I'm... I seen these on the air? Well, have you been watching? I watch a certain amount of television, yeah, because I have to... You know, I'm in the business, and I yes. check it occasionally, see what's happening. Obviously, you didn't see me. Well, or me, you would have remembered, right? Right, I would have remembered. <laughs> Can I ask what commercials they were, or you yes, will talk about them? I or... did a um, uh, beer commercial with uh, George Burns and Jack Klugman and me. I buttoned them up. I learned this new phrase. When you're at the end, you button them up. And I did that. That's all right. You just, just help yourself there. Okay. And I did a blue bonnet commercial. Margarine. What's blue? That's a margarine. Yes. I did it with uh, Reggie Jackson and Hermione Gingold and... This is a typical family. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Jackson, Hermione Gingold, and you. And now, there's, Joe a, there's a Quinella. Joe and, Fraser. And Joe Fraser. And ah. me and, and Abe Bogota. Oh, And we yeah. all had to wear the blue bonnet. Your average family, yeah. yeah. 
You're all covered in margarine? Right? No, I had to spread it on um, whole wheat, carrot, protein toast. And they gave me a cup of coffee. And I said, could I have a glass of milk if I'm supposed to be spreading this on such healthy stuff? They said, no, Joe Frazier had the glass of milk. I said, are they going to mix me up with Joe Frazier? Couldn't yeah. I have milk, too? But Wouldn't think so. Well, I had coffee. It was a rather low-budget commercial, obviously. And there's one glass of milk for the cast. What's the movie? Was I right? Scavenger Hunt? Is that yeah. the name of it? And you're currently doing that? No, I did it. Um, it's with a lot of people. I Isn't did. that still like doing it? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> you buttoned it up. I buttoned it up. You buttoned it up. Yeah. Or we wrapped, wrapped it up. Wrapped yeah. it up. Wrapped. Um, it's with a lot of people like uh, Richard Benjamin and Robert Morley and Cloris Leachman and Ruth Gordon and James Coco. And I'm a nurse. And I have a patient, Vincent Price, and um, we're playing a game in bed, and he dies. Okay, what are you folks working on? Uh, and he, he dies. We were playing leapfrog. Yeah. Could lead to death, I suppose. Yeah. He loses, and he's a bad sport. Yeah. Sounds like a kind of a strange movie. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Yeah. yeah but you were still it, doing you? it. Yeah, but I only. Well, did... I just said they were doing it. And you said they weren't doing it. Oh, but I did it already. I'm not coming back. I did my part. So, and... so when I said they're still doing it, they're still doing it. Are they? <laughs> You know who else was in the movie? Uh, Tony Randall. And he said to me, Carol, I'd like to see you in my dressing room. I thought, oh, no, not Tony Randall. You know how he says it so with authority? Yes. And I wasn't born every minute. So I said, let's keep the door open. And he said, okay. He came in. He said, how serious are you about your acting? I said, oh, I'm not serious at all. I have all my parts. I never go out looking for parts. They just come and get me. Really, I'm not serious. I went for one acting lesson with my manager, Ray Slivers. You remember him? And I, I went to this famous acting coach, and he had me go, uh, seduce me, seduce me, seduce me. And I went, uh-huh. And I said to Mr. Slivers, do you know what you paid $50 for? And that's the last acting lesson. I had, and I said, that's it. He said, good, because with your voice, you will always play the parts of idiots. <laughs> I said, uh-huh. He said, um, everybody has two voices, and you've chosen not to develop your other voice. You are a body of a woman with a voice of a child. He said, and only your analyst would know why that's true. And I said, oh, I don't have one of those either. He said, aha, uh -huh, that's the other voice. I just heard it. He, and so he gave me the name of this lady who is an act, uh, voice teacher, and he yeah. said, he, she probably won't teach you because she has very serious students. So when I think about it, everything he said to me was real rotten. But I was very impressed because he like, took his He was showing an interest in it. Yes, he was. And I loved it. So I went and I called the lady and she said, Oh, okay, you come to the Sanford again. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I don't have another voice. She said, you have you tried? Yes. She teaches you how to find the holes in your head. Like right here, to keep your mouth open. Right. Important. Very yeah. important. And then you stand against the wall and you put your hands here so you can hear where your air goes. Uh, why, did, why did you quit? I didn't quit. I still have one more lesson coming. Is she trying to lower your voice? No, she said this is it. In other words, you don't have another voice. Nope. Did you? He's, be... I can't wait to see Tony Randall. He is full of puckery. Yeah. 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 He sure is. He knows where the air goes. Yeah. <laughs> Where's all the air going? Where's the air going? <clears throat> Did you hear Miss Lillian said something?
Xin chào các mọi người và hôm nay bên em lại về một chiếc Mitsubishi Aptra xe sản xuất 2019 bản 1.2 số tự động hộp số CVT Aptra một trong những dòng của Mitsubishi nếu cùng phân khúc thì cái dòng này thì nó khá là rẻ so với những cái dòng cùng phân khúc bởi vì là cái thương hiệu này thì nó rất là chất lượng nhưng mà nó lại không bị mất tiền thương hiệu từ các bạn mua Toyota hay mua những cái dòng khác thì nó mất tiền thương hiệu như dòng này thì đa số chúng ta chỉ việc mua xe thôi Đấy. đón xe này hôm nay bên giao bán thì cũng rất là giá cả phải chăng bởi vì chưa đến 300 triệu đâu bởi vì nó đã bị đâm móc phần đuôi rồi mọi người nhá và keo chỉ phần đuôi đã mất Tuy nhiên là trước khi báo giá thì em sẽ quay tổng thể chiếc xe xe phiên bản màu bạc đấy điện hậu rất là đẹp Acha Acha ghê đấy, các bạn nhé Nói chung là mua con này đi thì hợp lý rồi chưa đến 300 triệu cho một chiếc xe đời cao bị đâm vào phần đố đuôi vì vậy là đã phải thay hai đèn hai đèn hậu rồi. vậy hai đèn hậu nhìn rất là sáng và đẹp nhé mọi người nhé cái lốp la răng và mọi chi tiết của em nó thì còn rất là mới xe đi thoải mái tích hợp xi nhan tích hợp ở gương rồi đèn trước rất là sáng mặt ca năng lưới đàn nhiệt thì mạ chrome nhìn rất khỏe khoắn và chắc chắn nội thất bên trong các bạn nhìn thấy vô lăng đã được bọc rồi cần số rích rắc như kiểu là của Toyota DVD thì kem nồi điều hòa hai vùng độc lập và âm thanh rất là hay hàng ghế sau thì ra ghế cũng rất là mới đó chưa sẽ xuống cấp mấy đó những chiếc xe em tính thấy khá là ok các bạn mua thì cứ liên hệ trực tiếp nhé để xem cái phần đuôi nó bị như nào các bạn phải đến trực tiếp để xem xem bên em chạy lại hết keo chỉ rồi và thích hết nỗi rồi tuy nhiên là xe thì đương nhiên xe nỗi thì phải giá nó phải rẻ nó đúng rồi đúng không Acha đấy các bạn có thể thấy rằng là... nói chung là xe này thì kể từ form dáng là cũng không đẹp mấy cũng như là thương hiệu thì cũng không có nhưng mà giá thành thì rẻ phải chăng đấy phải công nhận một điều như vậy và giá của em nó là 285 triệu các bạn cứ xem thật kỹ con này đã ốp về trên mưa ở phần nói chung là ở phần trước rồi đấy nói chung là cũng rất là đơn giản thôi không có cái gì khác hết cả các bạn cứ đến xem xe và các bạn nếu mua được thì các bạn thì bên em sẽ làm thủ tục sang tên khi bên em không nhận cọc trước rất nhiều bạn bởi vì là xe bên em xe nỗi đâm đụng quá vì vậy là nếu mà nhận cọc trước thì có thể là có thể là nhiều bạn lại bảo đến để bảo xe nó nỗi quá lại không, không không lấy vì vậy là cứ đến xem xe trực tiếp chốt được thì mới làm giấy tờ và sang tên và sang tiền không làm không nhận cọc trước và bên em thì chuyên mua bán các dòng xe nỗi giá nó phải chăng vì vậy là rất nhiều có rất nhiều khách quen nên các bạn muốn mua các bạn phải đến đến sớm nếu mà bên em mà ghi một phần bình luận mà đã bán thì là không còn xe nữa còn bên em mà chưa nói gì ở phần bình luận đó, trong video có phần bình luận đó, thì là vẫn còn đó như vậy là ai mua thì đến xem xe trực tiếp và để em sẽ soi cho những cái chỗ nỗi chỉ ra và giá cả nó, nó, nó hợp lý như nào vì vậy ai mua đi lại sớm với em và xin chào tất cả mọi người